All right, so according to this post from October 23rd, we are getting the Warlock preview on icywains.com today on the 25th. Um, so this is the Icy Wains post. It says Last Epoch Warlock Week. And apparently you don't get all the information in one day, but instead they are spreading out the information on this class throughout today, 27th, 29th, 30th, 28th, and 31st. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> okay. Um, I've never been to this website ever before. I don't even know what this website is. Apparently it's like some World of Warcraft website. I don't know. I've like never played World of Warcraft, so I've never been on this website ever. Uh, anyway. Discover the secrets of the Warlock, the final mastery of the Acolyte base class. And find out how to use its five curses to create devastating enemies, effects on enemies. So it's like going to be a curse class. Okay. That's... um kind of expected in a way um we're also gonna have like some kind of like void minions i heard like three years ago when they like initially planned this game but let's see <clears throat> today's the first day of our week-long series on icy wind and youtube by the way if the music's like too loud let me know um but i think it's fine or is it yeah it's fine right Okay, so for the next week we will be showcasing all things Warlock related as we wind down the month and approach the February launch. Warlock is one of the two final masteries that will launch with the game's release, which is going to be gracing our creators on February 21st, 2024. This mastery will complete the base class Acolyte and open up an entirely new way to play Last Epoch. Warlock is centered around five unique curses which can be stacked together to crush your enemies. So you crush with curses, eh? <clears throat> Interesting. These cursors each have unique effects against their targets, granting players the ability to focus on one or multiple curses to scale against their enemies. So we have Warlock curses right here, Anguish, Penance, Decrypify, Acid Skin, and Torment. Okay, alright, you see them here as well. Uh, Anguish is a curse that lasts 10 seconds, reduces damage over time dealt, and deals necrotic damage to all enemies afflicted with it whether you kill, uh, whenever you kill an enemy. Deals the quick damage to all enemies are reflected for that whenever you kill an enemy. So it's like corpse explosion, except... Different. Like it doesn't... Like the corpse doesn't explode, but it's rather like everybody like affected by the curse. Wherever they are, take always damage whenever you kill an enemy. Okay. Penance is a curse that lasts 15 seconds, which causes affected targets to take 20 spell fire damage when they hit another target, but it does not stack. Which causes affected targets to take 20 spell fire damage when they hit another target. So it's like a curse, but it's like retaliation in a way. Decrepify is a curse which deals 200 physical damage over 10 seconds, which added damage with added damage applying at 100% effectiveness per second and causes the target to take more damage from over time from damage over time based on the caster's missing health. Okay, so it's like a low-life curse. Dealing physical damage and it's low-life. I mean... The, the thing is, like, they do, like, a brief overview of each of them below here, right? But if you don't see the entire skill tree, like, this basically tells you nothing, right? <clears throat> anyway, uh, Acid Skin is a curse which deals 80 poison damage over, like, especially the numbers, I mean... Okay. Which deals 80 poison damage over 5 seconds, seconds with added the damage applying 8% effectiveness per second and adds a 20% chance to be critically hit. Okay, so that's basically, like makes enemies like crit vulnerable it's like adding like crit vulnerability to enemies okay the cropify will be good because of its name like it has to be good <laughs> i mean i can see this being good because i mean low life builds and elastic pock are a thing there's like tons of items that allow you to play like low life builds like basically like you lose health uh, like you lose max health or like rather no you lose like current health percent current health and you gain like energy shield basically 
Um, so you play like a low life build where you have like almost no life, but like tons of energy shield, and then you play the skill, and that is worthy like tons of damage. If you don't play that kind of build, then this is useless, and that's fine. Uh, this has a use. Uh, penance seems mechanically super wonky, and anguish seems, I mean, like more like corpse explosion kind of abilities. I feel like these always feel like a win more ability, which means it's probably like great for farming, but. In my opinion, at least I personally don't like these kind of skills that much. And obviously against bosses, they are kind of trash. Unless you can like spawn corpses. Unless you can like spawn corpses, kill them yourself, and then they count towards this damage. But you need to also curse the enemy. Okay, so you curse the enemy, you spawn corpses, and then you kill your own corpses. And that way you like, can like reliably deal damage against the enemy, right? If you can't do that, then like this is unreliable against bosses, right? It's like basically like only for for groups or like for like for farming maybe uh torment is a curse which deals 120 spell and aquatic damage over three seconds which with added damage applying a 200 percent effect damage per second it reduces mobility like movement by 12 percent okay so this one deals like the most damage it just deals damage and it slows the thing is like there, there could be like many interesting debuffs in the skill trees of these abilities but if you don't know what those are, then you don't know, right? Uh, so it's kind of like hard to evaluate them right now. Okay, ARPG, uh, Mr. Aaron did a video on that, which is even featured here. Okay. Each of these curses have additional effects that can be triggered through the passive tree and skills for the Warlock. We will be giving additional information regarding this throughout the week on the ARPG YouTube. These curses, combined with the five Warlock skills, create devastating combinations and a playstyle never ever seen before in Lucy Book. Check out Aaron's video below, below or visit the blah, blah blah blah. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I mean, it's kind of nice that they help like Ellie creators actually get promoted in a way. But it was, would have still like been nice to like get all the information in like one day and not like in, the, in like in a week. That's kind of weird. Okay, should I like watch Aaron's video? There's also a video from Dreadful. You would watch either. I don't know which one you would prefer. You could just like just watch both. It's like 18 minutes total. Uh, which one do you prefer? Dreads better? Should we start with Dreads? Okay, let's try Dread first then. Uh, Stronghold, never seen before. Stronghold Crusader. Iron Maiden, as you take damage, they take damage in D2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's like retaliation damage in Grindon as well, right? But like, on its own, I feel like it's always kind of meh. But I mean, we'll see. And in today's video topic, we are going to be going over the. I love how he like still has the old. <laughs> this is like the legacy icon of us book. Warlock reviews. Why is he not using Disney today? Sadly, due to all of the stuff that's going on around the reveals and. Is this the bitrate striking again? Maybe this. Uh, okay, there's like the icons look cool, and there's like a like a hungering souls shooting ability that looks kind of cool all the controversy i will have to split this video into two videos the first one being a quick overview of warlock in general and then the next one will be about a week from now when all the reveals are done so i can actually make the actual in-depth video on the class which make sure to subscribe for and like the video for now as well another thing i'd like to announce i think it's like it's not i mean this is a video he like has locally recorded and like he talks over him like locally recording this so this must be like on his end like with local recording just being bad due or something to all of this garbage that's going on i have decided to make the monetization for this video go towards a charity of whatever choice i end up doing after i upload this video i'm not entirely sure we'll see and that is because i don't do this to make money i don't need to spread out one reveal across seven different videos that's funny, like, I make a charity, but I have no idea what it's gonna be. <laughs> God. It's not his gameplay, you think? Uh, yeah, pro yeah, true, probably not. Yeah, yeah, no, it can't, it probably isn't, yeah. Try to squeeze out Then it's even weirder, what's the name here? Wait, is it from Aaron? Aaron, ARPG... Bro, no, I don't, I don't know what it says. Every little ounce of Maybe currency something else. I possibly can out of this job. I no, it's, it's, oh yeah, no, it says action RPG. Wait, does he like blacklist us? Did he do that or something? And 
I'm like trying really to blacklist it, so but it's... that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing <laughs> the black a little part. bit of a charity stint for this video and for the full Warlock video as well. So all the money that is garnered from the video will be given to charity. Now, it won't really be that much, to be honest, but we're still going to do it anyways to show that, you know, we're not really here to make money. We're here to actually... Yeah, yeah the guy himself is dreadful. Like, he's a, he's a pretty cool and friendly guy overall, but... Oh, the logo is where Aaron's cam was in the video? Okay, but he's like just using his Please video. Show like a 20 second clip. Have some fun with the game. So let's talk about the skill, shall we? So the first okay. skill that I want to talk about is, of course, Chaos Bolt. This is a new skill for Warlock. Essentially, it's necrotic and fire damage at the same time. It seems to shoot out a bunch of projectiles that go... Thanks for the resub capital, by the way. Welcome to on. a certain area where you cast it, and it can also shotgun. So you can like increase the area of effect to make the projectile shotgun more. Okay. And it looks to be a very strong skill. It's not That's only cool. does it have a very low mana cost, it seems, it also seems like as though it hits multiple times on a singular target, and it's gonna be very good for crit and for ailment stacking. Uh, I'm hoping that there's a lot of utility in this tree as well. We'll have to see. But Chaos Bolts definitely looks like a winner in terms of skill like mechanics and stuff like that yeah i mean projectile skill that can shotgun and you can like basically hit and run with it seems solid i'm really happy with this one specifically not like but sadly crazy, we don't have much other information about this until next week so let's move on definitely good i mean not like crazy and innovative right but like it all works. right so the next skill that we're going <laughs> to be talking fuck, about dude. is profane veil it seems like <laughs> as though this skill specifically uh, it kind of works like the skill in Diablo 4, the blood one that Necromancer has access to, where you become either untargetable uh, mm. or you can't take damage for a period of time. The Vladimir, you, you become a blood pool. There's also, it seems like as though, a bunch Probably of little orbs that are shooting out. I'm not entirely sure if that's enabled in the skill Looks tree cool, or not. We'll have to see later this week when we get all of the actual info. Now, this does look to be very strong. We'll see if you can increase the duration or not. Hopefully, there's a lot of ways to abuse this skill, because it looks a lot of fun. Right. Am I hiding the recorded with Bandicam watermark? Me? What? And maybe he is. No, no I don't know. No Hopefully, there's a lot of ways to abuse this skill, because it looks a lot of fun. Blase. All right, I'm putting this in post-editing, yeah. but I forgot that Soul Feast is actually getting a rework, or at least the visuals are getting a rework. We'll see if the actual skill is getting a rework, but Soul Feast is kind of mid it can deal a lot of damage and it's really fun. You can stack kind a lot of, of armor with it and it's pretty broken when you do that. But the mana cost on it can be absurd at times. So we'll see if Soul Feast actually ends up being good, if they end up changing it, if it works really well with the curse synergy on Warlock or whatever ends up happening. But I can definitely tell you the new animations on Soul Feast look fucking sick. So that's yeah, for sure. Is, right? They do. All right. So the next skill we're going to be talking about is, of course, Chthonic Fissure. Chthonic Fissure seems to be Ooh. a damage over time spell that you can place Wait, on the Chthonic? ground. Are they stealing the Chthonian? The Chthonians now? It creates a fissure that casts damage over time on enemies and it this also shoots out a bunch of bolts while it is active it seems like a bunch of necrotic bolts um, oh, right. and so it, it also shoots... shoots out a bunch of bolts while it is active it seems like a bunch of necrotic bolts uh this looks really good because it's reminiscent to so it's like firewall to the old cooldown casters in grim dawn where you stack mm. a bunch of very high powerful cooldown abilities on under a target and kind of try hey it's blackwater cocktail dude <laughs> let's go <laughs> Chthonic is a greek word yeah true 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 to deal damage through yeah it's like skin. it's like the Velkos w from league of legends as well i like that skill i'm, I'm gonna play it probably and this can be mechanically cool a lot of other damage over time skills that acolyte has access to and hopefully in theory that will make this a very strong skill not only for clear no, but yeah, for, for actually sure. adding additional single target all right, the next one is Ghost Flying. Ghost Flying looks pretty sick. It has a pretty decent AoE. It seems like as though it deals a decent amount of damage. It does spell necrotic slash fire damage over time. It seems like as though like the AoE is humongous for what it is, and it's a channeling. I mean, it looks cool, but it's gonna feel like shit to me to play properly. Like you, like you channel. It's like it's like a Keldur's Tempest from Arcanus Twelve and Grim Dawn. But you have to channel it and stand still. Ah. Skill, so we'll like, see. Terrible. But 
I like channeling skills. I think those that looks though, cool, they need to be buffed significantly so so that they can actually be usable in endgame. As standing still really sucks, yeah, but exactly. definitely Ghost Flame looks like to be a skill that can hold up to par in the endgame and last epoch. Why is there a black bar? I think this is Dreads editing, like trying to censor the name Action RPG. <laughs> like he's like trying to censor the name of the character. <laughs> <laughs> like the character is like, I I don't even know why. Like, it's, I mean, it's not like allowed to react to us. Of course, it is right. Like, here that we have. All right, so we're gonna be talking about the curses. Curses is gonna be one of the main mechanics mm -hmm. in the passive tree for Warlock, and let's talk about them. The first curse is Anguish. Anguish reduces damage over time dealt by enemies, and also deals necrotic damage to all enemies afflicted with it whenever you kill an enemy. So you apply a bunch of curses in an area, and then kill enemies, and it will proliferate through the pack at least. It seems like to be the case. This mm -hmm. is kind of cool. We'll see if the damage actually scales, right? We didn't get any damage numbers with it. We'll yeah, see if it actually I mean, this does seem uh, like on paper as a standalone, this seems cool for AoE, uh, trash against bosses, unless there's like mechanics that like make it somehow like viable against bosses. Kind of like most of those like corpse explosion abilities on their own, not a big fan of them because it's like always a win more mechanic, which can be cool, but I personally don't think it like feels good in games most of the time because it's either like broken OP or trash. And most of the time it's rather trash unless there's like mechanics that like um, enhance it to be actually good against bosses. The next curse, Penance. Penance is a curse that lasts 15 seconds, which causes affected targets to take 20 spell fire damage when they hit another target, but it does not stack. This is really cool, as it seems like so it will actually scale with your flat damage, and it will make it so that when enemies hit your minions or yourself, it will make them take damage. Now, of course, the damage doesn't seem like so it will... Yeah, this is like retaliation for minions, basically, right? Because you don't want to get hit yourself, obviously, in this game that much, at least not all that much, at least not in this class as well. Um, probably not, you're not gonna be like super tanky. I would assume, I mean, it depends on the items on the build. I mean, it, it can depend, of course, but, um, but yeah, as he says, like, it's inter more interesting for minions, but I wonder, like, how strong minion warlock is really gonna be there. Scale into end game properly. It could be decent. Single target, but if this can make it so you can kill trash in the monolith, this might be really good for just in general you can play like minions on warlock and of course uh, use penance to clear with your own damage and then use something like hungering souls for single target right it does seem like as though uh, hmm. penance might actually scale into end game very well okay. we will see if that's the case or not decrepify it is a curse that deals 200 I mean, this one should damage be great. over 10 seconds which uh with, with added damage effectiveness of 100 percent and causes the target to take more damage from damage over time based on the caster's missing health that's all you really needed to say to make low life warlock a thing if this deals yeah. any decent amount of more damage to enemies everyone's going to be low life on warlock which is a little sad but we'll see how it wraps up maybe it only gives like 30 percent more damage if you're at full negative missing life we'll see i mean it is one of like play dot right like if you don't play dot then this is not that good i mean that's then it's useless decrepify looks very 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 strong yeah for sure next one is but also it depends like on the numbers like how much is it gonna like <clears throat> Make them take more damage. If it's like 1% per like 1% missing HP, then... Missing life. We'll see. Decrepify looks very, good. very, very, very strong. Next one is Acid Skin. It's a curse which deals 80 poison damage. And this is like the opposite of Decrepify, right? Decrepify is what you play for dot builds. This is what you play for like crit-based hit builds. Because in LE, there's most of the time like only like two ways to play. Like to scale rather a character, right? You either like play dots and you stack dots with like attack speed and dot damage and so on, blah, blah, blah. But that's kind of crit, right? So you don't crit. But if you play a hit-based character, it's like so easy to get like high crit chance. So at least usually. So it's either like you play hit and crit or you play dots most of the time. Over five seconds with added. There's an acid skin and they crap both dots. Uh, I mean, the poison damage is a dot. That's true. But I mean, you could... I mean, it depends like if... Asset skin is like a good dot damage skill on its own, though. Um, I think the Crepify says like physical. Did it say over time? Oh, it is dot as well. Yeah, true. Yeah, it's also a dot. <laughs> hmm. But I mean, whether or not you use asset skin for an actual dot build will depend on like the damage of asset skin itself, right? Because you probably want to just like play another skill that has more dot, right? Because 
if Aether skin doesn't do anything else for dots, then the crit stuff is like useless. The damage effectiveness of 80% per a second and makes it so that enemies have a chance to be critically hit. It's like critical vulnerability stacks, but it's a 20% flat value. This yep. will be really good for like playing a dot build and you need to like apply something on crit or something if that ever becomes a Wait, he said it's good for a dot build where you need something to apply on crit. Really? Is it gonna be good for that? Because like others, like because pure crit builds like always get like 100% crit chance anyway, maybe? And ah, uh, okay. Problem. Or maybe, it'll yeah. help you go from 80% crit to 100% crit. Yeah, or like that. That's what I was, I was thinking, right? Like if you have like around 80% crit chance on your build and you need like another 20%, then this is insane. Um. Decided to come to Twitch chat. Lo uh, sorry, I'm like not reading chat that much either right now. Yo, welcome on TLBLB. Sorry, <laughs> Mikai Hokans. Welcome, on, guys. What is this video? This is um, this is for for Lassie Pock. Is it worth to buy LE right now or wait for 1.0 launch? Because definitely not getting a D4 after Pillow with season three. You need to invest mm. significantly less, especially on single target, which is great. Um, I'm definitely going to be interested in utilizing this if I play like a crit warlock setup. Now, of course, the last curse here is Torment. Torment is a curse which deals 120 spell necrotic damage over three seconds with added damage effectiveness of 200% per second and reduces movement speed by 12%, multiplicated with other modifiers, but it does not set. This is by far one of the weaker ones, but it's probably because it's like associated with some buffs or something like that. We'll I mean, it has like 200% damage amplification though, right? Like, this is the strongest damage-wise, is it not? Like, okay, the, the, the curse itself is kind of weak, but the damage is like insane, like compared to the others. Definitely have to see how well Torment scales, but... It does not stack. I think it means like it doesn't stack with itself, right? Because like usually... In LE, you can you can like stack dots by like hitting multiple times, right? If you have like, for example, like cyclone, like warp, warp path, right? And you hit like I don't know, like a ton, then you always apply like your dots with every single hit, right? Whereas this one, you can't like recast the curse to apply the dot like more than once, I guess. Overall, the curses look really good. I really like the diversity of effects that these have. Oh, the Three second duration is kind of sad. Um, is the, is the curve, like, is the damage value here, is it, that's like over, like, you divide this by five, or is it like times five? Like, is it 80, 80 poison damage per second over five seconds, or is it 80 poison damage over five seconds, so it's only 16 damage per second? Which is great. Um, I'm definitely going to be interested in utilizing this if I switch deals 120. So like in this case, it will be 40 damage per second, um, which is more than double of the other one, right? You will have to like reapply this every three seconds, right? So like for reapplying, you have to recast it, but it doesn't stack, right? You spell necrotic damage over three seconds with added damage effectiveness of 200%. I mean, the wording makes me think it's like that. And then this one is like... ...per second and reduces movement speed by... I mean, okay, compared to like, compared to a skill with which you can actually like stack the dot though, I feel like all of these have like terrible damage. Percent multiplicated with other modifiers, but it does not set. But we'll this see. is by far one of the weaker ones, but it's probably because it's like associated with some buffs or something like that. We'll definitely have to see how well Torment scales. But overall, the curses look really good. I I feel like the damage that's like being added to these curses, unless you could like somehow like make it actually like be a proper like damage of your build. Um, it's more like thematic, right? It's more like thematic, like lore damage, right? Like at least at the end, like towards end game. Really like the diversity. All the damage effectiveness on other dot skills, though. Each one seems to be usable for the most part. Torment looks a little meh, and English looks a little meh. But to be honest, it's completely fine because you'll probably end up just stacking a bunch of curses to do damage on the enemy, anyways. Now that's gonna be it for the video today. Uh, sadly, I can't go right. in more depth than any of these because, you know, the reveal was just absolutely atrocious. Sadly, I can't go in any of these because, you know, the reveal was just absolutely atrocious. Sadly, you know, we'll have to wait a week, but I'll be there in a week. So make sure to leave a like on the video. Absolutely atrocious. All that being said, this has been Dread. 
off to go wait a week i guess <laughs> i mean i <laughs> the fucking post i agree like what was that dude like it showed nothing okay so this is this has no damage i mean okay no it deals damage afflict wait it deals necrotic damage to all enemies afflicted with it whenever you kill an enemy it doesn't say how much this one 20 spell fire damage when hit by like when they hit another target But I mean, an enemy like attacks less than like once per second. I mean, maybe like once per second. Probably less though. And it's to attack and hit, right? And this is 200 over 10, so like 20 per second as well. So this is 20 per second guaranteed. This is 16 per second guaranteed. And this is 40 per second guaranteed. And this is 200% effectiveness. This was 80% and this is 100%, right? So damage-wise, from the raw numbers that we know, this one is the strongest. This one is like weaker and this is even weaker damage wise but i mean the effects are more important i would dare to say like 100 percent because i mean you can't stack the damage of these anyway and you will like stack damage from like another like hit chance like hit based attack speed uh skill probably instead or uh i don't know some other like spell that like applies like huge dots um there, there are a couple that have like for example also like multiple projectiles and they like apply poison but like multiple projectiles and so on so yeah, this uh, the, the curses will be probably like mostly used for their effects, I would assume. Uh, should we check out the other one as well, or is it he's just gonna like talk about the same stuff? How did curses work? And it's probably like the, the bone curse that the occultist already has, right? It's like you just cast it on the enemy and then they're cursed. Maybe like Aaron will have a bit more information on that. Ah, uh, his usual, like, intro. Okay, cool, cool, cool. officially here, the worldwide exclusive reveal of one of the last two masteries coming to last epoch, February 21st. Occultist? Is it Occultist? Echoes from e the Void. Over the next seven days, I will be breaking down the Yeah, it's like Cause of Frailty and Grim Dawn as well, yeah. From the theming of the class, to the passive tree, to all five Aaron, brand new champ. skills including leveling guides and build guides huge thank you to ehg in partnership with icy vein coming february 20 we'll have about this mastery yeah, let's skip through let's this for the most part with the projectile K okay so he shows the skills five ability okay you can actually hear the sound design at least though all right he has 4k 4K is also shitty quality. Another spammable skill for the Warlock is Soul Feast. It looks like Mike. Ah, uh, nah. Ripping fragments out of them to give you more survivability. It looks like Mike, but different. Has profane veil. Okay, the sound design is when pretty cool. When you're in profane veil, you are almost unkillable with a guaranteed dodge mechanic. Inspect the right way, you can also do a decent amount of damage. I always feel like he's talking in slow motion. <laughs> it's like the funny thing about him. Mike didn't do that. But wait, there's more. Oh yes, there is. Why don't we make a fissure in the ground and release some tormented souls, shall we? Like, do I have to? Like, I want to put this to like two, one point five times. See, if you're like, whenever he's talking. <laughs> okay, this is product by far my favorite ability. Though. I'll probably like, play this one. Fisher in the ground, yeah, and it's some of the fish, fish, and some souls. They're uh -huh. a fan of channeling skills. Yeah, this one sucks. Ghost flame like no way you play this. Your back. I mean, it looks cool, but no way you play this. Possible with these skills, because obviously their new skill trees offer so. Yeah, do we see the skill trees though? No. With a human as you me as warlock 1.0 February 20 penance as it's going through each with and it penect. Yeah, he just shows us one. Okay, so 
Bye. Like and subscribe, so guys. Like and subscribe. Bad chest, dude. Bad chest. This company is being bled like a stuck pig, Mac, and I got a paper trail to prove it. Check this out. Take a look at this. Jesus Christ, that right there. Hello everyone and welcome to Action RPG. I'm your host, Aaron, and for today's video, we're headed to the world of Last Epoch once again with Warlock Week. So this one, um... Uh, okay, he plays the clickbait game, of course. I mean, I don't blame him. Um, so you have to like, click on the other video first to get to the post. This was the post of Icy Wains, right, which like reveals stuff. They reveal like stuff here, stuff here, stuff here, stuff here, stuff here. So they don't like reveal everything in one day. And I mean, that's on like icy veins, I guess the decision, and that's how it is. And we have this like reveal week, and so we're getting like some new stuff like pretty much every day or every second day. Day two. And we talked about like the curses and so on earlier, and some of the new skills, and now we can look at the actual passive tree apparently, which also released like right now. Ooh. And what do I have for you today? The highly anticipated brand new passive tree for Warlock. Now, for any reason you did miss day one's video, I will link it in the description and at the end of this video where we covered the overall theming of the Warlock. We covered the five skill basics and we covered the five so new So, Chaos Vault, Ghost Flame, very, Sophie's, very good video no translation found for this in abilities missed it. and Capone right, Fisher. Let's jump nice. into this new highly anticipated I like the skill the most, I think. No, I mean, Catholic Fisher looked insane. The forbidden arts tear into the essence of their foes, corrupting their spirits with relentless curses, necrotic magic, and flames to burn their flesh. Chaos Bolt also seems ooh, cool, yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, let's just put now, 1.2 speed. Now, passive bonuses for Warlock, 5% more damage per curse on the target, and a flat 35% fire and necrotic resistance. Now, I was... 5% more damage per curse on target, 35% fire and necrotic grass. Okay, I mean, kind of basic. Goes in line with like some of the other classes, which are also kind of basic when it comes to passives. 5% more damage per curse on the target, though. That's actually more interesting than like some other passive bonuses and other trees. <clears throat> um... I mean, I could see like a world where you play like one, <clears throat> sorry, one movement ability, one main skill, and three curses, right? To get like 15% more damage for the main ability. Talking. But of course, there might be like some other like case where you play like another uh, passive or like another, I mean, skill that like has other buffs that, you know, gives you more than just 5% more. So. I think this one is at least like some kind of trade-off. I think this is not that bad. It could be worse. Like this is, it's not like super crazy complex interesting, but it's like not the worst either. So in yesterday's video about the I mean, this part is obviously like very bland. Like, <laughs> target as possible, and you, you see that right at the beginning with the passive bonuses. Now, is there a stack of a dot curse? I think all the curses don't stack now. Something I want to show you. You get a. Blanket, 35% necrotic resistance. In the base Acolyte class, you're going to get an additional 40 if you take Forbidden Knowledge. And so you like Necrotic Cups. Or five points into Unnatural, you get an additional if you take Wait. Forbidden Knowledge. Wait, you have... Knowledge. And if you put four points into... At, or five points into this Unnatural, you get an additional speed. 20. This is already 1.2 speed. This is already 1.2. going into Warlock, you will have 95% necrotic resistance. And this will matter... As you will see later as we go through <laughs> Warlock Week. You want as much necrotic resistance as possible. Okay, let's get into this new passive tree. Now, when I first got my hands on Warlock, the first node I looked at, my jaw dropped. Any uh, Necromancer fans out there? Check this out. Chaos Flames, increased fire damage, increased ignite chance, increased necrotic damage. Uh, I know why his jaw dropped, because it applies to minions. Uh, he's a mi I know he's a big mini enjoyer. Oh my fucking god. Uh, yeah, okay. Nice jaw dropping there. He's damned chance. And you can put eight points into <laughs> this, this passive you note. And there is three magic words at the bottom here. Applies to minions. More like dies of cringe. Those are the three magic words, dude. Okay. <laughs> all fire necro builds. All golemancer. All okay, lazy necros I mean, are just getting let's move on to the actual interesting ones, please. Damage and their dots. 
from this singular node. But yeah, Warlock Absolutely minions is viable. Huge. It's going to be viable. Instead of being able to only put three points or five points, there are some curses that are good for minions as well. Node. Absolutely awesome. I just just to put it out there, like it that. does work. So let's kind of just be nice. jump over the passive board. You have Soul Eater, increased mana regen, and you can regen mana based upon how many curses are on the target. So, for example, if you had five curses, you would have a 65% chance to get some mana back, and you can affect the cooldown of this because it has a three second cooldown. Wait, what? Second. Oh, yeah, yeah okay, okay. Uh... You gain mana and hit every three seconds, okay. That's what it means. I was like confused with those effect cooldown, like what the fuck does it mean? But yeah, okay. So you gain mana every three seconds, right? Yeah, okay. Cooldown. Okay. A cool it's like mana steal. Intelligence and five points invested. However much intelligence you have, you get mana. You got a hundred intelligence. This would give you a hundred mana. Very okay. powerful. Note. So it's a very mana Unholy stacker, kind of like sorcerer in a way. Damage for your spells and increased area. <clears throat> and then we're going to jump up here. Wait, how does spell damage and curses work? Does it just like tick every gonna... second or? Wait, how does spell damage and curses work? 15 mana every three seconds for each curse? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Well, let's move around the tree like that. I don't know why he doesn't show this one first, but yeah. Spells and increased area. Why does it show the notes? Show the fucking first three. And then we're gonna jump up here. Oh yeah. Oh wait, he doesn't show all. Wait, it says all nodes. <laughs> what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> okay, maybe he like show, shows them like order, um, like thematic, um, you know, like thematic synergies. Um, leech, leech against cursed. Okay. To Spirit Leech, this is a node that almost everyone is going to take. This is just Life Leech and Leech based upon... Everyone is going to take this bad chest. Gotta make sure you are hitting cursed enemies. Such okay. choice. Now, let's talk through our first cluster and see our mm. first passive skill. All right? We're going to look at these three right here. Spiteful Decay, increased damage over time and base health. And what do you mean passive skill? There are like others. Okay. Uh, damage per time, health, more damage over time to cursed. Okay. Um, I mean, that's like the same as this, just like 1% less, and then damage over time and health. Okay, so it's like dot synergy, and okay. More damage over time to cursed enemy enemies, and that is multiplicative. Then you come right here, Cauldron of Blood. <laughs> no, wait, that somebody takes pictures and combines this. Um, Cauldron of Blood, Bleed, <laughs> bleed Chance, <laughs> 5 points, Bleed o Overload Duration. What the fuck is Bleed Overload? Gain bleed overload, rip blood, and up to five enemies. Huh? When your cast a kill a skill and enemies within 50 meters, you have combined 25 or more stacks of bleed. You cast rip blood at an enemy and at up to five nearby enemies and gain bleed overload. Okay, so. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. But this is base bleed chance, and if you invest five points, you get access to bleed. Overload. When you cast a physical skill and enemies within 15 meters have a combined 25 or more stacks of bleed, you cast rip blood up to five targets and gain bleed overload. What is bleed overload, Aaron? Great question. Bleed over Rips blood out of a target, enemy dealing physical damage on it. Oh, that's rip blood. Wait, what, what is, uh, where's, where the fuck is bleed overload then? This only shows rip blood. We know what the rip blood is. That's like a base skill from Acolyte. Overload grants you 15% more physical damage. Oh, here. Bleed overload grants you 15% more physical damage over time. To bosses and moving enemies. <clears throat> more damage. Pog you, dude. Pog you. More damage. Okay. Damage over time to bosses and moving enemies. And you can further boost this. No, now it's, it's 1.5. I already changed to 1.5 now. To six points by Crimson 1.5 speed. This is an increase to your physical damage, increased bleed chance with Rip Blood, and with four points invested, your Rip Bloods hits. Rip Bloods costs each second with bleed overload. Okay, so this is basically like Rip Blood 3. Like, if you don't play Rip Blood, you maybe can still play this in certain situations, otherwise you don't. So it's basically like a rip blood passive tree. I mean, <clears throat> it's it seems pretty cool if you actually play that skill. Have a chance to bleed enemies while you have bleed overload. You cast rip blood at nearby enemies each second. So it just triggers over and over again. This is our first cluster, pew, pew, pew. and this is our first skill, bleed overload. And remember, mm -hmm. the first half of this tree is available to Lich, and it's available to Necroman. That's actually true. Like, you just play like... Rip Blood Lich, for example, with this. 
Das ist ein Fünfes. Answer. Moving down to the bottom for some survivability. So on harrowing armor, this is base armor, base health, and more mhm. damage per curse on target. You got five curses on the target, you're gonna get 15% more armor. Mhm. Also, oh yeah, yeah, this more curse, more armor on target, and like more damage on target. These are also available for like liches, right? So you can do like, yeah, like, you can be a lich and do other stuff, right? Wait, wh by the way, where are like all the curses? Like, they're not active abilities apparently, like, what's going on here? And you can get seven points on dark protect. This is war per second, less damage taken per curse on target. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. We, I think we... <laughs> I think we get it by now, like, curse enemies... This is get per stuff. Second. And again, five points invested, less damage per curse on the target. Five curses on the target, 10% less damage taken. More survivability that is definitely going to be needed. Necromancer inside of the Warlock. Now, any channeling fans out there or anybody that wants to use Ghost Flame... So you... I want a Ghost Flame. Which one is that again? Is that a channeling one? Ah, oh, that's a channeling one. Yeah, that, sh that one sucks, right? Like, mechanically, it will just suck, I think. Um, It's like Hedator's Tempest in Grand Dawn, right? But you have to channel it. It's like, I don't know. I mean, it looks cool, but... Ghost Flame. So you have ward. It'll probably suck. Ward of Metabalance, you gain additional ward decay threshold, and you gain ward on kill. You also gain ward per two seconds, uh, per, per two points of intelligence while channeling a skill. Okay, so that like helps with survivability when you're channeling. So you will need to like stack int and then ward for ghost flame. That's like the idea here at least. Ward gained on kill, bad chest, ward decay, threshold. Mm, which okay 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 i see so like a, okay i mean okay yeah it's just like ward stuff now, this is ward <clears throat> decay threshold ward gained on kill and ward per second per intelligence while mm -hmm. channeling okay you can also get ward decay threshold per ready one percent necrotic resistance this is the first mm, so that's like where you have like 95 percent necrotic resistance so you can get like more ward decay threshold <clears throat> And of course, you also want Vitality for like HP. I guess Vitality got nerfed, it's not like as OP anymore as it used to be. But yeah. The fact this guy can speak slow in 1.5 is impressive. <laughs> mm, two points per poop. This time in Warlock week, you're gonna yep. see a buff. Based this needs like 3x speed. I always love the idea of pet builds, but every time I played them, it was incredibly boring because the pet played the game for you. Yeah, that's why I also don't like pet builds that much. I mean, some people like them because of exactly them doing everything for you and basically making, like, turn the game into like a walking simulator. Some people like walking simulators. Uh, I don't, but yeah. <clears throat> Where does the necrotic grass come from? You get. <laughs> 35 from the passive here and then you get what was it like if you invest points in the base acolyte class you can get like 65 there no you get 60 percent from acolyte and 35 from warlock so like zero from gear right you just, i mean you can't get more from gear but you don't have to you can let just like get 95 percent Necrotic resistance, just because you are a warlock right Necrotic resistance and so gear doesn't matter just like always in this game yeah, the gear like matters less in this game than in other RPGs, I feel like. If you take it the right way, and points to vitality will further buff that. And then you can put eight points into Doom Herald, which is less damage taken while channeling, and more damage to damned while channeling. I know this is a... Okay. Oh yeah, damned is like a debuff that you get from like Doom rings and so on, right? Huge, just data dump for the passive tree, but don't worry, I've got some stuff to show off. Huge Moving data dump. last two nodes that are available to... We can't keep up, please slow down. Warlock, and this takes us over to poison overload so you saw our bleed overload okay it's like bleed and poison stuff yeah, yeah. i mean poison lich was already like giga and like you just picked this on top then i guess <clears throat> poison overload probably deals the same thing just like with some defiling nova on top let's talk poison overload with vile tide when you Instead cast of a damage over time skill and enemies within 15 meters have a combined 25 or more stacks of poison you gain poison overload for 12 seconds and cast defiling nova which expands outward poisoning enemies it hits now i probably should have said right at the beginning of the video, that everything is subject to change until we have 1.0. Okay, so tinkering is likely going to yeah, happen with these. makes sense. All right, now, let's take a look. They're going to, like, poison. rebalance this, just like how they rebalanced Lagoon in the last three years. <clears throat> An overload grants you 4% poison penetration per stack of poison on the target, up to 100 stacks, and Defiling Nova has its own skill tool. Is he on cocaine? So, nah, he is uh, on 1.5 speed, because otherwise he's talking too slow. Is a sub-skill. And you could further buff this 
with Rancid, which is ward on potion use and mana gained on potion use. While you have potion poison overload, using a potion spread stacks of your poison from all enemies within 15 meters up to two nearby enemies. So this Sorry. Uh, potion spreads poisons during poison overload. Number of poison spreads within 15 meters too. Mm hmm. Okay. So you use your pot to get like insane AoE. And you also gain ward and mana when you use a potion. Okay. Enemies. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to put some points in. We'll take that. We'll take that. And let's go test out some poison overload. We are now at the training dummies and we are going to trigger our poison overload. Now, what you need to do is have 25 stacks of poison, be within 15 meters and use a damage over time skill. So what we are using is hungering souls. And we are going to shoot, shoot, shoot. And bam, you see that the entire screen turned green. And we got this little icon right here. Poison overload. You have 4% poison. You also gain 4% per stack of poison on the target up to 100 stacks, and that is 12 seconds. So you could trigger this every 12 seconds. Wait, so you get 400% pen? Skill built in to the passive tree. Very, very cool. Moving over to the warlock only nodes on the right side what? of the passive tree. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the outside nodes first, and then we will take care of the more complicated skill nodes in the center. Now, the first node we're going to look at is wither. Withering chance on hit 20%, and you can put five points in it, which means you have a guaranteed 100% withering chance with five points invested. Okay, this is DR. This is uh, premium. Less damage taken from wither at 8%. Yeah, okay. So you have a... With five points invested, you have a hundred percent withering chance, though. So, like every single hit you do, always withers the enemy, and you always take eight percent less damage. So this is basically like eight percent DR. And you Let's get a go. multiplicative less damage taken from withered enemies. Again, a lot more survivability inside of Warlock. Like always, so as long as you attack. Warlock, then why wouldn't you attack in an RPG? Unless you played it one curse that like. I mean, even then, I guess you always attack, right? ...to give up because you're going to want everything. Now, what is withering? Each stack of withering increases damage taken from cursed by 10%, 6% against players, and 20% on... Wait, it also gives you more damage from curses. Uh, okay, so that's like increases damage taken from curses by 10%. 6% against bosses and players. Wait, can you like wither yourself? Is it like PvP ready? Or maybe like enemies can also have the wither debuff, right? Last three seconds can stack up to 20 times, so you get um 200% more damage on your curses when you wither up. Like, when you hit 20 times, you get like 200%. Okay, good thing, right? Good thing they have these kind of mechanics that have insane ramp when at the same time they also have bosses that have like ramping defense, right? Like, the, the more often you hit the boss, right, the less damage it takes in this game. Why? I mean, they could, like, remove both ramps, right? Like, remove <laughs> remove the ramping defense on bosses, and then also remove, like, ramping damage like this that, like, stacks into, like, craziness. Like, huh? Like, ramping gets crazy against bosses, right, usually. Like, like ramping is also, like, maybe, like, what some builds need to, like, be even decent against bosses. But then again, like, bosses have, like, anti-ramp. Oh, I don't bosses get it. last three seconds and can stack 20 They wanted to rework the boss reduction system for 1.0, but just kidding, it got cancelled. Hmm, yeah. They said that last year. I mean, it's it's fine though. Like they're doing progress, right? They're like bringing you the warlock pork champ. I mean, it, the 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 skills look cool. Like Athonic Fisher is gonna be like bad chest. Dude. Like I'm actually gonna play this. Like not even nice. kidding. So far with the build guides that I've been working be on, this is a must have. Moving over to the right. <laughs> this, this is a must have. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, eight percent dr. Every single build, even if you're playing a fucking pet build, right? You're gonna put five points here. Such such choice, much wow. Then again, Grim Dawn also has like you know passives that you always pick. So I mean, it's not like unheard of. Like not every ARPG doesn't have something like this. When you directly cast a curse skill, you also afflict a number of enemies around the target around location with anguish. Anguish. Enemies anguished on curse cast one per point. What is anguish? Darkness. When you directly cast a curse skill, you also inflict a number of enemies around the target location with anguish. And again, if you don't know what anguish is, this is a new skill for war or new curse for warlock. Check out Warlock Week Day. Oh, that's way. Oh yeah, that's the curse. Okay. Um Shit, what was what was anguish again? 
are the first one. The first one is <clears throat> reduces damage over time dealt. It's like from enemy, like that's like it reduces damage over time dealt by enemies to you, right? Yeah. Or is it from yourself? Like, does it make you less, like, like do that so much? That would be, like, actually interesting, maybe. Uh, these necrotic damage to other enemies afflicted with it whenever you kill an enemy. Oh, yeah, this is also the, the like, you have to kill to... Uh, okay, so when you directly curse the curse, you also afflict a number of enemies around the target location with anguish. So they take damage when you kill something else. So when you cast the curse... Wait, so if, what if you cast anguish curse? If you cast anguish curse and then like anguish curse casts anguish? It doesn't stack, right? So like, this only works if you don't cast anguish, but like if you use something else... Then you also get anguish on all like some enemies around that target. Okay, I mean I guess. A one video. So this is a really easy way. Honestly, mm. even if you only put one point in to ensure you are inflicting a curse. I mean it's at least like a bit more interesting, fight. like mechanical. Cruising yeah, but... down, spell base damage for mm -hmm. your curses, three points allocated, hitting a mm -hmm. boss or a rare enemy also triggers anguish on them. So know that there are two nodes. Okay, so with that point you also got the anguish on the enemy. Uh yeah, okay. Three points allocated, hitting a boss or a rare enemy also triggers anguish. Yeah, okay, so it's like no longer on... Okay, so this is what like makes anguish viable. That's what I said earlier, like if you if you have an on kill ability like this, like anguish, it's useless unless you can have like another mechanic that like makes it, like it enables it for bosses. And this is the node that enables that, right? I mean, yeah, it makes sense. You put three points here and then your anguish also works. And you can play like an anguish build and you also deal damage against bosses. Wish on them. So know that there are two nodes, one right here, Unholy Torment, and Duskbringer that you can boost the base damage of your curses. Mm. Yeah, it'd also be going to be good if you like, want to actually like, deal damage with curses. 10 points if you want 10 points of intelligence and 10 points of vitality. I mean, that's like a super generic node. I mean, let's see Pest of Trees has like <clears throat> lots of these. And um, this looks like a sorcerer node or something like that, right? It's like the same, more or less. You're so confused why this is on the Pest of Tree and not in the Anguish Tree, though? That's the thing with the curses, though. Like, I, um, you don't see them here. Like, they're not skills. Unless they're, like, base skills from the class that all... Like, the, the Acolyte class had, like, the Bone Curse before, right? So maybe, like, all curses are just, like, base... Base skills from the classes. I like, from the base class. And then they all have trees, yeah. Like, why is this not in the tree? Well, it's probably not in the tree... Because they don't want non warlocks to be able to play it. Yeah, that's probably a base. That's a good one too. Moving over to chaotic strikes. Yeah, it's have a chance to deal double damage. Additionally, your hits have a chance to deal double damage per curse on the enemy. Why what? I mean that's like for hit builds, of course. Not for dot. Like everything else was like this class seemed very dot heavy so far. This is like something that can potentially make hits kind of crazy though so you curse like different curses ideally and then you deal double damage five percent chance only though wait five percent chance and then you get like another one percent chance per curse so um you probably have like what at least three curses maybe like four from like some other activation or something like that Maybe with endgame gear like 5, I don't know, and then you have like 10. So like 10% chance to deal double damage is basically 10% multiplicative damage increase. Is that good enough? I don't know. I mean, probably okay, yeah. Double damage chance. I mean, for 5 points, that seems fine. 10% multiplicative more damage for 5 points should be actually really good. Double damage per curse on the target chance. There are multiple ways to boost double damage with the warlock and again you'll find out more throughout the week for warlock week and you can further bring this with critical strike multiplier and three points invested critical strike multiplier with chaotic mm, but this is only for chaotic strikes you have overall more crit multi and then you also get more crit multi on top of that for chaotic strikes uh, you want minions i mean there's minions here 
Like, there's no extra, like, minions, minions, but there's support for minions, let's say, like that. Six strikes. Boost up that crit multiplier. Five points in Aspect of Death. Now, this one, you are going to hear a lot about Warlock Week Day 7. I'm trying to crack it. Aspect of Death. When you have increased health, you have increased health, and you deal more damage multiplicative per stack. <laughs> Did he just say when you have increased health, you have increased health? <laughs> Uh, that's funny. And you deal more damage uh, per stack of each negative ailment on you up to max of 90. I was just like, ah, oh, it's the one. There was like a self-poison, like self-bleed build, I think, on, for Lich. So this is more or less that as well. Just um, better, I guess, for you. Maybe even crazier. Damn yourself on kill or minion kill. Damn yourself when hit. You inflict damned on yourself when you or your minions kill a target or take a hit. Hmm. More damage and negative ailment on you. 0 0.5. Aye, aye, aye. Okay, 90. So it's 0 0.5 times 90. That's 45% multiplicative damage, right? For each negative ailment on you, up to a maximum of 90. Increased health and increased damage per negative ailment on you. The three-point bonus you inflict damned on yourself when you and your minions kill a target or take a hit. Yes, putting damned on yourself or any negative ailment is going to boost your damage. A Cursier, increase cast speed, increase cast speed for curses in the three-point bonus. When you're below 35 health, you will cleanse all curses off you. And how many curses are on you, you will gain ward from it. So this is kind of like your fail safe if you're putting too many negative ailments on yourself. And I know we're kind of bound. Okay, so, but this is like only, this is not usable when you're playing low life. I guess like self-curse you can't play with low life anyway, right? Because otherwise you just always like kill yourself. Um, so this, you don't play this with low life, you play this with like more than low life, and if you like drop low, you... Yeah, okay, so like you have the solution... Okay, so the, the self ailment thing might look something that like is maybe like complicated to play around and like not that hard, like not that easy to figure out. And requires like some proper theory crafting, but then again they just provided the solution to this problem like right below the actual problem, right? So like this is the the problem or like the challenge, right? You get like insane damage for like cursing yourself, and then the the solution to like save yourself from dying um, is this, right? This works with low life. I mean, but you would activate this all the time, then, right? Like you would cleanse yourself every five seconds, which makes this node useless. Okay, like it doesn't, the thing is like it doesn't, um, I mean it just says like when damage leaves you below 35% health, right? So like your own curses might trigger this, or like your own uh, like bleed and so on might trigger this, whatever you have, right? Oh, then again, wait, wait, the curses? I mean, no, wait, they don't deal damage, all of them, do they? Like, if you use some that, like, don't deal damage, then you only... Then this triggers whenever you get hit, yeah, yeah. Basically, like, whenever you get hit, you always trigger this. So every time you get hit, you trigger this and you get ward. But you also, like, lose all your curses, which is your damage, right? I think I think this is still, like, probably better with... I mean, okay, so you can play it with low life, but is it better with low life than without? I don't know. Because it might, like, trigger way too easily with low life, and then you lose all your damage. Curses are on you, you will gain ward from it. This is kind of like yeah. your failsafe if you're putting too many negative ailments on yourself. And I know we're kind of bouncing around everywhere right now. Bleeding crone, you have a chance to gain haste for two seconds when you kill a cursed enemy or hit a cursed boss. When you kill or hit a cursed boss, uh, gain haste. Okay. That's just haste, okay. Boss or rare enemy. You want to be quick, you could take bleeding crone. I'm telling you. There's so many good nodes for Warlock. And the last node before we move into the center. Vessel of Chaos. Increase damage over time, and you deal more damage over time, multiplicative for each active ailment overload. What is an active Batches. More damage with overload. Even ailment more overload. damage. We've seen a couple of them with poison overload and with bleed overload. So, okay. those are all the outside nodes that are Warlock only. <laughs> Literally, all of them are good. The haste node I never take because it's like, all it's going to do is make me run fast. But if you have great survivability and damage, it's just going to push your clear speed. Either way, all of them are good. Let's move into the center, starting with <laughs> All nodes are good, okay. Of Ruin. Oh. I mean, all nodes are good is like, can be good, of course. Because right? then you have actually like, 
decisions to make. Damned chance, 13% per point, 5 point bonus. Damned overload duration, 12. Oh, another overload. <clears throat> And chain duration 2 seconds. When you cast an acrobatic skill and enemies within 50 meters have a combined 20 stack or more of damned, you chain all damned enemies to the ground for 2 seconds. I mean, chain seems like a keyword here, so I assume it's more than just like rooting Good, them in you're place. Back. Local men succumbs to a snake. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Henry Subs, you know. <laughs> Dude, what was that death, man? Like, what the hell? I'm still triggered. I still can't explain how. <clears throat> Like, I mean, I died so many times in Grom Dawn, right? I mean, but like those two, like how? What the fuck? Know where this is going. This gives this boost your damn chance when you cast a necrotic skill and enemies support. within 15 meters have a combined 20 stacks or more of damned. You chain <clears throat> all damned enemies to the ground for two seconds and gain damned overload for 12 seconds. Damned overload grants you 1% more damned damage to enemies per 2% missing health on you and 2% missing health on the target. And you so now, okay, so this is like, I mean, Necrotic only exists as hit, I think, and no dots at all. So, <clears throat> actually, no, there is Necrotic dot. Here is Necrotic dot. Um, There is Necrotic dot. I mean, this, this fucking curse here is Necrotic dot as well. For some reason, I thought this is only hit, but I guess it's... Uh... It's again, like, another... I mean, okay, all the overload stuff is, like, more dot-oriented, I guess. Hmm. You can further push your damned overload by grasping damnation. Increases chain duration, increased damn duration, and the five point bonus. When you have damned overload, overload, you have a chance to chain nearby damned enemies to the ground each second. Yeah, okay, so this thing is like the same as this, but like different. And the other thing was like the same as this, but also different. Um, <clears throat> okay. So the theme of Warlock is uh, overload, I guess. Overload lock. And I mean, it's one of the themes where you can like play like three different like overloads necrotic, bleed, or poison. And then you can play <clears throat> some like low life stuff. And uh, the like you double see some, hit. Uh, necrotic chains. Thing as well. Uh, th those might look cool actually. Maybe you should like slow this down a little bit. Wait, where are the chains? <laughs> Okay, what are, what are the actual chains? Oh, those, those, okay. I am extremely excited to show you this next one. We are moving down from chains to Infernal Lash, which gives you base ignite chance, and with five points invested, when you cast a fire skill and enemies within 15 meters have a combined 25 or more stacks of ignite, you strike up to three nearby ignited enemies with flame whip. <laughs> and gain Ignite Overload for 12 seconds. Flame Whip has its own sub-skill tooltip and Ignite Overload. Okay, so there's also Ignite Overloads because they have like four different overloads. One for Necrotic, one for Fire, one for Poison, one for Bleed. <clears throat> and uh, they are, there's like, when you do, when you Ignite, then there's like Overload and like Ignite makes your Ignites deal more damage. And you have a chance to like use a skill called Flame Whip. And then, like, Flame Whip also, like, gives you more damage for Ignites and Overload, because that's how the entire thing works all the time. Okay, cool. Grants you 1% more fire damage to ignited enemies per- And also, Necrotic and Fire, like, link to this thing with the- what was this? Chaos Bolts? But can we convert Flame Whip to Cool Whip? Maybe in the Flame Whip skill tree, which- no, actually, that, that doesn't exist. For 20% global Ignite chance for fire skills. In the Warlock passive tree, grants you access to flame whip skill. Is this, is this faster speed? Which can be further boosted through Scorched Reach, which gives you oh. base fire damage. And when you have Ignite Overload, and you kill an ignited enemy, or hit an ignited boss, or a rare mm. enemy, you cast flame whip at nearby enemies. Okay. Enjoy the new skill, flame whip. Bad chest. Let's look at it. Now, if you thought we were done, if Let's do it. now if you thought we were this done, like if you five thought damage. new damage. 
Okay. Now, if you thought we were done, if you thought it couldn't get any better, you would be incorrect. We still have two nodes to look at. Moving over to the Ashen one, which gives you increased necrotic <coughs> damage, increased elemental damage, and with five points invested, when you gain Ignite Overload or Damned Overload, all ignited and damned enemies within 15 meters are inflicted with Witch Fire for 12 seconds. Aaron, what in the world is so Witch, is Witch, Witch fire? fire? How am I going to remember all this? I don't know. Witch Fire is an ailment that deals 300 fire and 300 necrotic damage over 12 seconds. It cannot stack. And you can further boost Witch Fire, which if you want to take Witch Fire, this node is required. <laughs> Domain. Witch Fire that you inflict witch deals fire more overload. damage multiplicative. So this is how you scale the damage of your Witch Fire per global chance to ignite okay, your fire skills and per witch global fire. chance to inflict damned with necrotic skills. Additionally, okay, so this is like basically overload, your hit spread Witch Fire right? to a number of enemies within 10 meters. I like cast this on that and then this on that That's and then overload and like more wo two. load. You now have a great understanding of the passive tree. You know the theming of the class. You know all the new curses. And I mean, it looks pretty cool though. Like... For Warlock Week Day 3, tomorrow we're going to be doing a full deep dive and I'm going to show you what is possible with one of the new Warlock skills, Ghost Flame, which has some of the best particle effects and VFX I have seen inside of last Ghost Steve Flame, Dock Leaf. a very fun channeling skill. So that is tomorrow. A couple of asks at the end of the video. Ask number one. I'm hoping today is the day I have earned your subscription. I'm hoping today is the day... You click that button. Like and subscribe, guys. Like and subscribe.